Oh, looking forward to today's racing. A bit of running, but it's always back to be uh, here for Doozy Day 1. Does it feel fresh again? Yeah, it does. You know what, as soon as I drove over Ernie Pierce this morning, the nerves set in and I'm looking forward to it. Hank, what's going through your head? I'm excited. It's a great vibe. I'm happy to be here. Nice water. So I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully we can have some fun out there. It looks like it's going to be really competitive. Oh, for sure. Uh, Doozy's always competitive, so it's going to be uh, yeah, cat and mouse all the way to the finish. Eh? Looking amazingly relaxed and chilled, Birgit and McGregor calmly paddled away on the Umpson Doozy River and then magnified their lead on each of the long portages to earn a two minute overnight lead over Valley icon Spinello Quella and his Gauteng partner Siseko Tondini. There were gutsy challenges from the Houston brothers and the Hungarian world number three Adrian Boros racing with local Karl Forscher, but nothing could tether McGregor and Birgit. That was fantastic. Um, I had a fantastic battle today with Andy. It was a new experience. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, we paced it right from the word go. And, uh, you know, the goal was just to get you without too, too much to catch up tomorrow. Hey, we got you first. So for me, it was a new experience to, to win the first day of the doozy. And I'm thoroughly looking forward to paddling the next two days with a fantastic guy. I think we, we just wanted to stay out of trouble. The plan wasn't to kind of lead from the beginning, but just not to get into any trouble or get stuck in any nonsense. And uh, yeah, the plan kind of evolved from there. Cornello Quella, Cicero Tonini takes second today. Cole Porsche and Adrian Boros, what a performance from these two. My goodness. You know, uh, the first day is not for us, that's for, for the runner, but fortunately, fortunately we, we are fine and we came third and second. So tomorrow is our day, or actually my day, because there is lots of flat water in the end. And if we can keep some, some energy for, for the end, yeah, I think we, we, we can be good. The women's race was always going to be tight and one of the pre-race favourites looked to have railroaded themselves when the sisters Jordan and Kana Peak fell out of their K2 at the Ernie Pierce Weir right at the start. Not much was said, but instead they set about playing catch up with a steely resolve and by halfway they had run past Christy McKenzie and Bridget Hartley and into the lead, a lead that snowballed alarmingly as they raced down to the finish at Doozy Bridge. We did work hard, we knew we had to work hard to catch up, so we did push it a bit on the run, um, because we know that's our strength. Five minutes, that can disappear easily with a swim or some technical problem. And there's the dam, which is the paddling part of the doozy, so tomorrow is going to be another interesting day of racing. Day two is a different ball game, however. The runners will take a back seat and the 46 kilometer stage into the Amgani Valley always favors the strong paddlers. Sure, I don't know, you know what I mean? I'm very nervous, my son's in front. This is his um, first, um, first doozy, so we hope it all goes well, eh? I'm sure it will, we've trained, trained hard for it, so we hope for the best, eh? Our goal is just to finish the race and just have fun like the whole, through the whole journey. I've done a couple of fishes and I believe it's similar to the fish, so I hope it goes well. Hope you don't swim too much. Nervous at all? No, not in a double, even a single, yes, but in a double I feel okay. Hey.
So I think today, day two, there's uh, far more obstacles in the river than yesterday. Just try and not make mistakes and, and try and capitalize on a smaller advantage we've got. But it's a long way and there's two boats chasing us together and I think we just have to box smart and stay calm in the river and, and enjoy it. Andy Burkett and Hank McGregor were delighted with their two minute lead starting day two but little did they know just how much they were going to need it. Just after the saddles they bent the rudder of their K2 and were struggling with their steering. By confluence, Bonello Quella and Siseko Tondini had caught them and the other chasers had also been told and they sniffed blood in the water. McGregor and Burkett opted to stop at the Mariani Foley Causeway to replace the rudder while Quella and Tondini took off on Gomeni Hill to try and make the most of their new lead with Anstott and Vanetian Boeza scampering off behind them. Rudder replaced, they set off with fourth placed Carl Folscher and Adrian Boros. Over in Gomeni the split stayed static but once back on the river, the two chasers were 1 minute 50 behind and then 1 40 behind by the headwaters of Inanda Dam. And that's where the sheer power of the world number one and two came good. They smashed the gap on the flat water of the dam and then they won the end sprint to reclaim their lead. So four boats will start the mystery final stage together. No, never flip. I don't even think uh, since I've been watching Juzi have I seen four boats start the last set here. So it's super exciting. I can't wait. We just couldn't outclass the power of, of Hank and Andy and Adrian Boris paddling with Cole Forshaw on the dam. They reeled us in. And then as you saw, four boats, four boats coming in at the end of day two today. So a very exciting day tomorrow that we're in for. Tomorrow I trust my partner. He's quite good with, uh, on the river. So big confidence from that. And yeah, we just have to give it all we have for tomorrow. The women's race still belongs to the bubbly Peter Marisberg sisters Jorna and Kana Peak. With over five minutes in the bank after day one, they were worried about the stronger paddlers reeling them in on day two. For a while, Bridget Hartley and Christy McKenzie looked like they might be making some headway, as did Jenna Ward and Vanda Kisley. But the Peaks had done their homework on the section of river, and by the time they got to the headwaters of Ananda Dam, they had grown their lead to over seven minutes. They will start the final stage chuffed as hell to have five minutes between them and Hartley and Mackenzie. Yeah, we're just gonna see, gonna have to see what happens tomorrow. Um, if there's low level rules, that'll be great. If there isn't, I mean, I just you just gotta deal with what you have. So yeah, we'll we'll try keep our lead and yeah, try hang on to that as, as much as possible. We just can't give up. I guess we have to go as hard as we can on the dam. We have to run as strongly as we can, make absolutely no mistakes. And when we get in at the bottom of Burma after running like blitz down the hill, we just have to keep a cool head and push as hard as we can until we cross the line in Blue Lagoon. Day two is always a toughie. It is the longest and even with a medium level of water in the Amgeni, the river is tough and unforgiving, making reaching the end at the Msinsi Resort all the sweeter for every single paddle.
uh, yeah, I think it's pretty exciting for everyone else, uh, including us. Um, you know, we never know what's going to happen uh, between now and Durban, but I'm sure there's going to be uh, some casualties. I just hope it's not us. Uh, yeah, you know, this race is always exciting, but but I think now it's more more exciting. I'm I'm not nervous because we we know the course down uh, pretty well, and Carl is a good driver. We we got good performance. I'm not I'm not tired, so so it will be a good race. I'm feeling a bit tight. I can feel two days of racing on my body, but feeling good, feeling well rested, excited to get the last day done. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, last two days have been tough, so bodies are definitely feeling it. But yeah, ready for this last day. Give it a good show. After the slower paddlers got underway at dawn, the 10.30 elapsed time reversed order start saw the incredible spectacle of four boats leaving together at the front. Pre-race favourites Andy Burkett and Hank McGregor were locked in a scrap with Sponello Cuella and Siseko and Tondini and Stott and Bonetti Coeza and the underrated local Carl Forscher partnering Hungarian Adrian Boros. It was a cat and mouse first half on a low but makeable Angani River as all four crews led at one time or another. Then came the brutal slog up and over Burma Road. Stott and Coeza got onto the tight path through the bush first and slowed the pace right down. Down the other side, Quella ran himself and Ntundini into the lead with only McGregor and Burkett in contact with them. The defining moment came a short while later when Quella and Ntundini took off their splash covers going into Mango Rapid, thinking there was a compulsory portage coming up and they swamped their boat and had to stop and empty. That allowed Burkett and McGregor to get away and it also let the two chasing boats catch up, setting up a thrilling three boat race for the last two steps on the podium. The resultant lung-bursting two-kilometer end sprint went to Falsha and Boros, who became the highest placed foreigner in the race's history, with Quella and Ntondini denying Stott and Nkweza a podium finish. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I still can't believe we, we, we did it, but but we we yeah we, we worked hard and we we caught the guys because they they were far away from us. But when, you know when I when I see someone just just one of the corner, um, I can keep myself. So yeah, it was great. The women's race was justly won by the gutsy Peter Maritzburg sisters Jordan and Kana Peak, who paddled and ran consistently well and dug deep when it mattered. I'm just so surprised, I'm euphoric, I, I can't even explain how proud I am of my sister and what all the hard work that we've done has paid off. The race for silver had the big crowd at the finish on the edge of their seats, with Jenna Ward and her Hungarian partner Vanda Kisli locked in a hot stopping duel into Blue Lagoon with young Christy McKenzie and Olympic bronze medalist Bridget Hartley, which Hartley and McKenzie took sensationally in a sheer display of determination from exhausted bodies. That's a massive comeback considering Hartley was out for the count on Burma Road, leaving McKenzie to carry the boat on her own over the hill. The race organizers pulled a rabbit out of the hat by staggering the limited water ecological release to a paddleable level for every paddler down the entire river on day three, something celebrated by every single paddler that finished the 67th edition of Dr. Ian Player's iconic annual paddle pilgrimage from Pietermaritzburg to Durban.